What do you say, everybody? Welcome to Elephant in the Room, part of Roll Tide Pods, and a lot of roll tiding going on right now across the state of Alabama and Bama Nation. We're going to talk about that basketball team. We've got a little football to get into as well. Alabama continues to recruit. All that right here on Elephant in the Room with Jay Coker. I'm Mick Gillespie. The show's brought to you by Lance's Lock. Lance'sLock.com, man. Lance, we had... His fingers on the pulse of this Bama basketball team said that he thought they could make a run, uh, and he was exactly right. Heard him saying that on the next round. And then uh, we're also brought to you by MyBookie, mybookie.ag, up to 50% to $1,000 price match, mybookie.ag, when you use that promo code. And my buddy, Big Sexy Elmo, did it, and uh, he was riding high. And he's uh, still riding high right now, although he did take the under in the Bama game and the over hit. But Bama won, so he didn't care. All right, so let's get him on the screen. There he is. You see him right there next to me. Jake Coker, I'm Mick Gillespie. Great to see all of you guys out there, and uh, great to see you, Jake. Hey, good to see you too. Kind of like I was talking about earlier, uh, to all our listeners and watchers, you're welcome for that North Carolina pick. You nailed it. Uh, yeah, I mean, we both had a feeling early on that line screamed Alabama's going to win this game and, uh, don't feel, don't feel as good about that line for the UConn game, but, uh, Hey, you never know. Vegas doesn't get them a hundred percent right, but UConn did go on a 30 point run, giving up zero points while they're scoring 30. I mean, everybody's got to doubt Alabama, uh, pretty big time from the, public perspective at this point you know yeah. mm-hmm. I, hey i'm glad uconn won the way they did you know us we got nothing to lose here you know everybody nobody thinks we can take them uh that's kind of the position you want to be in going going into a game i mean of course unless uconn really is that good but mm-hmm. uh man grant nelson finally showing up i mean he showed up all year but not nothing like what we saw in that north carolina game yeah, he finally looked like he was when he gets the ball, you know, early on up until, you know, up until the last few games, he uh, he looks like he's looking for somebody to get the ball to mm-hmm. and that in that North Carolina game. He finally, you know, just said, screw it and actually and look to make plays and be a playmaker at, at, in that game. And it just looked like it changed the whole dynamic of the of our team. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, 12 points in the last six minutes, five minutes, six minutes. Uh, and his quickness, I mean, he got around Baycott. He couldn't, he couldn't keep up, keep up with him. Uh, I mean, I, I'd love to see it earlier on in the year, but I'm glad he's figuring it out right now. Look, I am shocked by uh, the way that this team's played and I'm in a great way. No one oh, yeah. could have expected that they were going to put it all together like this because they had a good season. And and you look back at it, I mean, like up until the last, you know, couple weeks, they they looked like they were going to win the SEC. But then they get bounced in the first round of the tournament. And and it's been a different hero. You know, Sears led them through the first two games of the tournament. And then you mentioned Nelson and then Pringle and Stevenson were great in the uh, the game against Clemson. And you're right. I mean, they are an enormous underdog. No doubt about it. I mean, like, it's David versus Goliath. And, and part of me worries about the fact that you almost get the vibe that we're – and we should be. We're happy to be there. You know, oh, but yeah. it kind of reminds me of some, like when – you guys played Michigan State. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, we made it. <laughs> you're, like, you're like this, you know. <laughs> Here's a team that's won the national championship. They kicked our ass last year. Oh and I, yeah. And and yeah. and I mean, like they, they just they got a guy that's like seven foot two, 
and he just like, grinds people up. He can actually play basketball. This is it, Alabama's going to have to play a perfect game to win, and th- and that's going to have to be you got to get a quick start going, score a lot of points, and and make the pace of the game where you tire out that big guy. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I you can play so fast that you outrun him. You know, a yeah, lot right. of transition buckets, uh, and you got to have performances like Jaron Stevenson had on Saturday. I mean, the guy averages five points a game, and he comes out, and I think he had sixteen on Saturday. I thought it was I thought it was nineteen. Uh, even better, but four of seven from the three point line. I mean, when the ball is in his hands later on in that game, you're like, I mean, that's the guy you wanted to shoot, you know? Yeah. So that step back three from Mark Sears at the oh, end. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. I tell you, I, we were watching in my backyard. And I, our whole neighborhood had to hear us. I mean, I, I haven't had that this much fun. I don't know if I've ever had this much fun watching Alabama athletics in one single week as I've had this week. At North Carolina game, I was sitting there next to somebody, uh, one of my buddies, and, you know, we were keeping it close, and it looked like, you know, started looking more and more like we were going to win. And I looked over at him, and I was like, man, if you sit next to me this entire time and we win this game, you might end up getting hurt. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I mean, I just love when we're good at basketball. It is. Yeah. I mean, I saw, I saw a barstool clip of, uh, what's his name? Big cat. And, uh, is it PMT? And, uh, they were talking about us being a football school. And they're like, well, what do you think a, your average Alabama fan would give up to see Alabama basketball win a national championship? And they were like, uh, you know, PMT's saying, uh, what was he saying? A SEC championship, uh, a playoff berth, and, you know, Big Cat's like, no, nah, no, nah, I think it's less than that, less than that, an Iron Bowl. I don't even know about that. And I'm sitting here thinking <laughs> – Hey, I'll give up every national championship except 2015. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the quote of the year. <laughs> the, other guy, the other guys are going, what the? <laughs> <laughs> I just get jumped the next time I'm in the in the complex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It better not be 09. <laughs> better not be 2012. <laughs> Man, that's funny. I grew up going to basketball. You know, I was a big uh, Maryland basketball fan, and I remember Lefty Trezell and then Gary Williams. I went to the Final Four in the championship when they won in 2002. I, I, and I remember them working up to it, you know, like – uh, and it's crazy to me that Alabama is a better basketball school than Maryland, than a lot of schools right now. And it's all because of Nate Oates. The guy, he, he reminds me of, you remember Pat Summit that was the women's basketball oh, yeah. coach at Tennessee. I remember hearing stories about her that like, she, you know, anywhere she would be around other coaches, like, Hey, how do you, how do you win? You know, like everybody else is just trying to have a beer and hang out or like, you know, whatever. Like she was just constantly trying to figure out how to get better. And it was always what she would talk about with, you know, when she was, you know, kind of coming up as a coach with other coaches. And, you know, you hear these these stories. Nate Oates was talking about Nick Saban quotes and how he had put them up when he was at Buffalo. And then he came and and he would talk to Coach Saban about winning championships. He said he did the same thing with – uh, you know, with with Pat Murphy at softball, and uh, he talks to um, uh, Sarah Patterson, who won championships at gymnastics when she was the head coach and, and won a lot of them, right? And 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 like he wanted to get to the Final Four and then you know win a national championship. Um, I love that dedication, man. I mean, you can learn a lot about winning just by being around winners. Oh yeah, I mean. I've I've met Nate Oates a couple times. I mean, he you know he probably doesn't even remember my name or, or know who I am. But uh, when we when I see him, you know, usually it's at a Alabama golf tournament or or something 
to that effect. Uh, but you can just tell, you know, him and Coach Saban, they do have a lot of similarities. I think they're very, very professional off off the field just because they're they're so focused on the single task at hand. That's almost when you see him at these golf tournaments, it's like, you know, he's not he's not drinking a beer. He's not he's spending time with with people that help the program out and he's he's <laughs> fulfilling his obligation. But you can almost tell he's like, all right, I'm ready to get back to what I'm hired to do. You yeah. Know, I want to get back out here and coach and and that's what I enjoy doing. That's what I want to get done. Uh and you there's a singular focus there. Him and uh, he's like a young coach Saban, you know, coach Saban's uh, I mean, he's very, a very good speaker, but you're not going to see him, you know, go out there and make, he will with the players and around the locker room, just because that's the culture of football and sports really. Uh, but you're not going to see him making a fool of himself anywhere, you know, making jokes and looking like an idiot anywhere. That's just <laughs> not either one of those guys, you know, <laughs> Like we would do. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to be drinking beer. All right, that's one. <laughs> not going to be making bad jokes. Okay, there's two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Nick Saban, man. Uh, yeah, he's yeah, not going to. He's not going to tell Alphonse Taylor. I love it when you're unchained. Ah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, was thinking, I was thinking about Shank during this basketball tournament, watching like the guy that has become my favorite non-Alabama basketball player is Burns of North Carolina. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's like uh, a Shank guy, you know, like you just feed him the ball down low. You could tell he's having fun playing. Did you, have you uh, seen yeah. this guy? I love him, man. Oh, yeah. I watched him yesterday against Duke. I haven't watched a ton of them, but I watched him yesterday. I hate Duke. Anytime Duke gets beat like that, I love it. I love the fact that even the officials, which they don't do it as much now as they used to, but there was a time when, uh, you know, Duke would get all the calls, you know, the Krzyzewski days. And uh, uh, even even getting some calls, they couldn't stop NC State. Well, it's going to be a hell of a game, man. <laughs> NC State and Purdue. Did you see that technical foul that yeah. they gave the NC State coach? I mean, how do you do that in an Elite Eight game? I mean, that's like an official just wanting camera time. Like, yeah, I, I, I did that. It's like, I mean, who does that? Yeah. You know? I mean, you it's put the game in your hands. That's mm -hmm. what you're doing. And it was, it was nothing egregious. There was no, you know, I mean, I don't know if there was foul language or not, but I don't think there – it didn't look like there was enough content there to – to even get a point across. Uh, I just can't imagine, you know, it's like throwing a, a flag from 40 yards away, uh, you know, across the field after an interception in, in Tennessee Stadium. Uh, just, <laughs> just a garbage call, all about me call. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was terrible. Um, I, I, but I, it didn't even matter. They couldn't stop Burns. No. He was he was unstoppable. No, I, I can't wait to see him. He's you know, of all big men, he's probably gonna be the best matchup for Zach Eady on Saturday. I know. He's like if Shaq and um Charles Barkley had a kid. <laughs> 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 he's so big. I mean, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, okay, and this this may hurt, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. Alabama is you they are the they got the longest odds to me to win this. They, it's going to be – I think Alabama to win the national championship this year is going to have to have everything break their way. I just don't think they're as good as Connecticut. I don't think they're good as good as Purdue. And honestly, I don't even know if any of those teams are hotter than NC State. NC State had some injured players, got them back. They caught fire. They, to me, are a dark horse to win this. The big guy's good. They're scoring points. They're on. They just they they look so good right now. And I mean, the way that they just they just beat up on Duke in North Carolina twice. I mean, these games weren't even close, man. I mean, like that they was, just and that was kill the third them. time. Uh, that, wasn't that the third time NC State had played Duke in the last month? Yeah, yeah. And in the, the, those last two games, or they didn't, wouldn't have even made the tournament if they hadn't have won the ACC. Yeah. So they're an eleven seed. I mean, the the to me, the NCAA tournament kind of just exposes your culture at, at your school. You know, I mean, yeah. when your back's against the wall, how are you going to play? 
Yep. And I mean, Alabama's proven to us. I, I know to me, I didn't think they were a very mentally tough team uh, going into the tournament. I just, it just didn't seem like, you know, when you don't play defense, that says a lot about you. Yeah, right. And all of a sudden, it's like, I mean, they are diving on the floor, doing everything they can to keep the season alive. And I mean, you just, this is the kind of Alabama, this is the kind of basketball as a fan, you know, you, you'd love watching. Even yeah. if they lost Saturday, I mean, I'd have been, uh, I, I would have hated to see it, but at least I could accept it, you know, knowing they played their asses off and got after it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Not, well, not intimidated, not afraid of anybody. I mean, yeah. UNC, again, the UNC game, uh, that guy that's been there forever, Baycott. I mean, I could see them, you know, I, just getting kind of intimidated and, and rolling over. And then you got Grant Nelson coming in here, playing like his hair's on fire, not afraid of anybody, you know, coming out of South Dakota. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you got to love it. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Uh, or North Dakota or whatever. Yeah. I, I still can't believe it. I'm 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 just so excited about what's going on right now. And we and I've said this on some of my other shows. We as a fan base, we have to get behind this basketball program. We got to stop not showing up for some of these like, you know, games in the early season. We've got to stop uh, you know, basically ignoring them until the tournament. We've yeah. got a legitimate, we've got a legitimate program right now. And and I'm telling you, and a lot of you guys are agreeing, and a lot of you guys might not want to hear this because we love football too, but you don't make the final, you don't make the final four by accident. Okay. It's yeah. the toughest thing to win in college is basketball, having to go on the road at all these places. And we made the tournament three out of four tournaments. Remember, they didn't have one in 2020, yeah. right? And never made it any lesser than the Sweet 16 in that three-year run. Yeah, right. And even and we've had the number one overall seed. And I'm telling you, that that team just had all that bad stuff going on, you know, and and it really affected them. Uh, and, and and this year's team is kind of the team that is setting us up for a, a, a chance to really win a championship because now you know what it takes. Oh, yeah. You're going to be able to go out and recruit those type of players. We've talked about the the gym being uh, not so good, but let's make it a good place. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in the name of the great Fluffopotamus, mm -hmm. my buddy, who I, I, I wish that guy was oh, here man. to see this, man. I just wish that he – because uh. – I never would have – the cynic that I am never thought that there was going to be a day when we were in the Final Four. Well, I mean, you just wow. as an Alabama basketball fan, you get so beat up, you know, pulling for them. I mean, last year is, is the year. We're going to win it all. And, you know, we go out there and, you know, again, I know they're playing hard, but, you know, lose to San Diego State and you're like, well, that was it. That was our our one chance. And then – Nate Oates puts together a team that's, you know, a lot of transfers. Um, he's got some young guys coming up that have played a huge role. Uh, I mean, Jaron Stevenson's 17 years old, I think. Or maybe he's eight. Is he 18 now? Yeah. Uh, Ryland Griffin, he keeps him around, has been instrumental in us winning a lot of games, especially in the tournament. Mm -hmm. I think I can't remember what he shot from three the other night, but he scored a lot of points. Um I mean, I, you know, you find out a lot. Of, he, Avery Johnson left him a lot of good players, I mean, uh, for the first two years. Yeah, like Petty and those guys. guys. Uh, Herb, Herb Jones, Petty. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, John Petty, three points. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, John uh, Petty. Uh, but now now you're figuring out, all right, how how's – NATO's going to do with a you know brand new batch of guys every year. Then out the transfer portal, and he's put together a team. Let's see, three out of the five starters are transfers. Is that right? Yeah. And you're in the final four. I mean, just unbelievable how quickly he can assemble a team. And you think about his style of play. Have you seen the shot chart from last night or Saturday? Yeah. Night? 
Yeah, it's great. How unbelievable is that? Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, but that's what that's what gives Alabama a chance against Connecticut. You have to hit the threes, but the analytics tell you the mid-range jumper is a waste of time. So what yeah. you do is you do exactly what they do. You shoot the three or you take it to the basket. What the, what the issue is is when they miss the three and then they take the basket away from us, we're very, very beatable. When we hit yeah. the three, oh, man, watch out, dude. Watch out yeah. when we hit oh, that yeah. three. And, I mean, you think about it, the more threes you shoot, the more opportunities of offensive rebounds you got. I mean, because those balls are flying off. I mean, you, Right, you and those guys it. were going for them this time. You know, I thought uh, Pringle had the, the best game. I thought he had the best game last oh, time yeah. out because of the offensive boards, man. I mean, he's in there and he's getting in there. But all those guys were fighting for the ball. They were he's so been, hungry. Pringle has been a different guy since that Grand Canyon game. Uh I mean, ever I think almost I almost think ever since he got that technical foul, uh, and kind of I think he almost you know woke up and realized he he's going to cost his team, and all of a sudden after that, I mean he has been just burning it down, mm -hmm. physical, playing with any big man that any big man that shows up, man he's on him, he's playing hard, yeah, uh, and Estrada, man I love Estrada, just cool head. I mean, keeps his cool, handles the ball well, has been scoring a lot of points and kind of going under the radar. But can you imagine how much fun he's having? I think this is his senior year, and his, this is his first tournament experience ever. And he's going to the Final Four. And he hits those threes, and you can't – I mean, he can't have a bigger smile on his face. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just yeah. loving every minute of it. And, you know, Mark Sears, we go on forever about him, but – that uh, that step back three is going to be an iconic moment. That might be a Daniel Moore print right there. Yeah, and you know what? I got my um, Antoine Petway Daniel Moore print. Uh, I got to see it's that. In my, it's in my car. You, it's going to go in the studio. I've waited. I, I've tried to get this, and you know, I was courtside. I, I've said it. I ran out on the court and started a. Uh, you know, the, if anybody has the video, I'm in there. I'm the guy that ran out first or at least second. I mean, I was one of the first three people to run out <laughs> on the court. And I but I was a student. I couldn't afford the print. He only did like 200 of them because there was a pre-order. But, yeah, I mean, like that may be – you're right, man. That may be the the next Daniel Moore. Uh, Sears is is iconic now. I mean, he's the all-time yeah. leading single-season scorer. <clears throat> and if he does a print – they better have mama in the background of the print. Oh, I'm yeah. loving her, man. She makes the whole thing. I mean, <laughs> she's fired up and she, she's I great, think, man. I don't think they've ever panned over to her and her being her sitting down. She's always, <laughs> yeah. standing up, you know, <laughs> we need to have her. We need to have her on the show. Oh man. That'd be a lesson. I don't know. Yeah, when, my light how, keeps, I got one of those automatic. There we go. There you go. Um, we need to have her come in studio and hang out with us. She just seems like a fun. Um, just, I mean, I, I love the outfits look good. She's cheer like a cheerleader. She's been really just it, one of the, the highlights, you know, like, like, do you remember when um, the school from Chicago had that run? Uh, Chicago, I think it was Chicago, Illinois, Maryland. right? Oh yeah. Chicago, yeah. That was, Maryland. Chicago Mary Marymount. Yeah. Or that's whatever. Because right. they and, had uh, the, Sister the Jean. Lady. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The Sister Jean, <laughs> right? And she's like our I mean, you know, in in our own way. It's she's not Sister Jean. I mean, she's a lot younger and and everything, but I mean like she's kind of like our Sister Jean, you know, like kind of <laughs> yeah. like our mascot. She's our mascot now. Yeah, yeah. She's she's our this year's version of fluff, you know, just out <laughs> there um having fun and you know, leading the cheers and um, I, I I don't know that Alabama has a chance in this game, but I do know that if you are on the fence of going to the game, you should go because it's fun, man. I mean, even if you get – I've been to the Final Four and I've been to the championship game, and it was great. Both games were awesome to watch. It's like a doubleheader of great basketball, high stakes, and then the championship game's great too. You know? Well, here – you know, my argument for that is – is we may lose and probably should on paper. And it's a, it is a, you know, a risk going out there to see a loss, but man, that percentage, I mean, if we do win, that's going to be the best basketball game Alabama has ever played. It will be the most memorable game you've ever seen to beat UConn 
Yeah, I mean, it's like like the miracle on ice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, nobody expects us to win or even play them close. And uh, gosh, I'd love to sit there live and lose my mind in the in the stands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so much fun. Well, and I'll tell you this too. Um, you know, there there was a a great boxing match in the '80s. You know, where um, there was a Russian boxer that no one could beat, and this this guy was a killer. I mean, like he he would kill you in a boxing match. He did that to a, a former champion, and you know, to uh, you know, just to kind of make up for uh, the loss of a friend, one of the all time great boxers actually went to Siberia and trained and then <laughs> and fought this unbeatable champ. And I just remember him saying, he's just a man. He's just a man. And, and Balboa uh, did win <laughs> that fight. <laughs> hey, we are America's team now. Ivan Drago. Do you remember? <laughs> I, so they're like the Ivan Drago and we're like Rocky, you know, we're just little Rocky over here, you know, like, like we're just glad to be here. How you awesome know, would it be if we wore the Alabama tops with American flag shorts? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. I would love that. <laughs> Can you imagine how awesome that would be? That would be great. Uh, and uh, that's what we're going to need. We're going to have to have that kind of an effort, man. We're going to have oh, to have yeah. that kind of an effort because – we are uh, major, major underdogs in this one. And I, I know it's 11, and I feel like it should be 11, 12, 13. I mean, I, but that yeah. does not mean that you couldn't do something about it. I mean, you know, Bama football in, in 92, what were they like a 17-point underdog against Miami and beat them, you know, or whatever it was, or huge underdogs. Um, you know, so you, you can do it, and – I, I, it's, but it's going to take, it, it, it's really going to take shooting. Like they're going to have to, they're going to have to shoot the three early. You know, it's oh, yeah. one of those games where they hit like eight out of 10 threes to start the game and, and yeah. totally mess their rhythm up the other team. And they need, I mean, I, it, it's when you got a dominant big guy in, you know, in the paint, I, I almost, it seems like Grant Nelson is in foul trouble 60% of the time we play Mm -hmm. i hate to i mean it seems like our bigs get in foul trouble more than any team we play on a consistent basis Mm -hmm. i love to see us drive to the bucket and try to get their bigs in foul trouble of course Mm -hmm. i guess it's kind of tough to do when you're shooting as many threes as we are but i'd love for just one of the main goals to be hey i don't care if you get a charge just attack that guy get Mm -hmm. him three fouls as quickly as possible because so, again, it just, I mean, it's if our guys get in foul trouble and that that big white dude UConn has is able to just run free on our guys rotating in and out, it's going to be a tough, tough way to go. Yeah, he's a big guy and he can play too. Oh yeah, yeah, he, he's he's a basketball player. He's not just a big body. Uh, uh-uh. and the other thing is this tournament. Um, you know, the officiating has definitely let them play. Oh, you yeah. know, it, 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 except when we played against Grand Canyon, which uh, we, we don't want to rehash all of that again, but um, you know, they're, they're, I mean, we've already forgotten about that game. We, I yeah. mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know what, you, you know, speaking of our threes, though, uh, you know, who watching Tennessee. Versus watching us, I don't know if you noticed yesterday, but did you notice how many mid-range jump shots they took? Yeah, missed them all, but yeah. just a waste of time. Felt like you know, just dribbling inside to twelve feet and thirteen feet, shooting a mid-range jump shot, and they were missing everything they shot in the latter end of that game. Right, clanking off the uh, the glass. Oh yeah, Boy. and they had a great opportunity to win last night too. Yeah, yeah. Well, Rick Barnes got him to the Elite Eight, but you know, he that that team is that team was really good, man. They had everything you need to win. They they were a national championship contender. And and look, I mean, who what was the guy's name? Brad uh Parker. Who who was the guy that transferred to um Bradley, right? That transferred to uh Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Jaden Bradley. Did he transfer to get to the final four? 
that's a that's a tough realization right there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, roll tide, the friends. Thing, the only thing I'll say. <laughs> Oh, man, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> I was just saying that, saying that to him because you know he's watching, right? It's like, oh, there's my old team, you know. Like, <laughs> you got rolled out. With that. God, that would have sucked. Hope I mean, that, uh, hopefully, you got a good nil deal. You know, the only thing I can say in his defense is he wasn't a known shooter, uh, but he's a heck of a leader, obviously for Arizona now. Heck, he he almost won the game for him. Uh, for Clint, I mean, against Clemson, uh, you know, hit a big three, but he's not the shooter that that we have. And Rylan Griffin and uh, Mark Sears and Aaron Estrada can he can sling it up there. I mean, mm-hmm. let's see, I'm trying to look at his. Uh, well, he would have been a big part of the team. You know, the other question is, um, you know, had they uh, it had uh, uh, what was the guy's name? The big, the big guy that thought he was going to be in the NBA and he's in the G League right now, off of last year's team. Let's see. You're not talking about a. Uh, well, we had a first round draft pick. No, no, no. Oh, Come dude. on. You, you know we who I'm two. talking about. Uh, you talking about Noah Gurley? I thought he no. was senior. Oh man, I'm having a brain block right now. Just Charles Bediaco. I thought Bediaco. Betty Ako. No, he Betty Ako could have – yeah, he could have came back. I thought he was a senior last year. No, 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 no. And then – and 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 I was asked, uh, hey, what do you think the team would have been like had they had Betty Ako? And to me, it's like, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I mean, you, you would expect them to be better just because, you know – Betty Ako is the the piece that they're missing, but you never know, man. Chemistry is a part of this. You know, it, it, it just is what it is. You know, this team is who they are, you know, and I mean, Betty Ako, my gosh, I can't, you know, he turned it on towards the, the second half of the year last year uh, and really started to look really good. I can't believe he left early though. I thought he was a senior. Yeah. And so you, what you, what, you know, to me, it's like with these NIL deals now, I don't know why they, you know, why they don't um, stick around and make that money. I mean, you're going to get paid the same amount, and I mean, uh, especially if, if you're a if you're a later later round draft pick. Why in the? I mean, co- in, in college at Alabama, you got it made. You get to make a little money on top of that. I mean, yeah, right. What's the rush? Unless you're yeah. again a, a first round draft. Unless you're a Brandon Miller or a Noah Clowney. Yeah, right. Oh. The uh the this the that ju- that step back three that Sears hit is the biggest shot. That was uh, that's so memorable, man. I mean that you you nailed it by saying that's a Daniel Moore moment. Like that that's what I'll remember. It's the first oh, yeah. I, I'm trying to think of and somebody's gonna get in here and tell me in, in, in the comment section, that's why I love. <laughs> um but but I but to me I don't remember an iconic play like that. Um, I tell you what, all, all the success. I just don't remember an iconic play like that. You tell me what you what, what the iconic play is. Well, the only one that I, I remember really well that had he had we won the game, it would have been an iconic shot. But that Alex Reese uh, buzzer beater in the Sweet Sixteen in twenty twenty one. Right, but we lost. Yeah. I and I, yeah. that was, I was telling you, that was the last time I was at the Houndstooth Saloon in Chicago, which was like the Bama bar there. Um, shout out to the guys when I was up there uh, Friday at uh, the, uh, clo- uh, what is it called? Second to home or close to home. That's it. It's in Wrigley. That's the new Alabama bar. They were, they were roll tiding up there. So the, I'm trying to think. I mean, but the problem is, is there was never a shot in Alabama basketball history that ever carried that much weight. Yeah, you know, oh, had, yeah. Had he missed that shot, you're talking about a whole different ball game, you know. Uh, and then to do it in the Elite Eight to go to the Final Four, I mean, that basically punched our ticket, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, I when I, I was when I saw that. I, I mean, I was. Throwing people around the room, just <laughs> chest muffin, doing all that. 
Oh, uh, that was that was great. Again, one of my favorite favorite games to ever watch as an Alabama fan, no matter the sport. Yeah. Uh, I you mean, were cheering. Six or third and twenty six. Obviously, that's probably the most iconic play of all time in college football, at least for an, definitely for an Alabama fan. Oh yeah, second and twenty six. Yeah. Third, there was another one that was pretty cool. It was called uh, Fourth and Thirty One. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only the only problem with that one is that it was like, you know, you're so. I was about I was about to just walk outside and stop watching because I didn't, you know, I, mm-hmm. I was like, we're really going to lose to Auburn, who's seven and six and six right now. Mm-hmm. Or six them, and five to ruin our season. Yeah, let them run uh, out on the field. Oh yeah, yeah, they'd be rushing the field and all that, and it was almost like a relief that that play happened. You know, yeah. I mean, this this step back is like, I mean, I'm not gonna say we're just happy to be here in the Elite Eight, but I mean, I don't think a whole lot of people gave us a shot to be in the Final Four. You know. Oh yeah, look that that was when it was like we were winning. You know, like Sears has just been begging for some guys to help him out, and he mm-hmm. got it now. You know, like he doesn't have to carry the well. Uh, he didn't have to carry the team in the uh, this second round because it was other guys that did their job. And then, you know what? He he didn't have to score thirty points. You know, yeah. he, all he had to do is just do his thing. And and in that game. Every time Clemson would make a step towards Alabama, he'd just do something. You know, oh, yeah. like it was just kind of like, okay, yeah, this is what I've been, this is what I've dreamed about my whole life. <laughs> boom. Remember all those three pointers I was practicing in the gym after my first year? Boom. Here we go. You know, it was like, <laughs> oh, you guys think you're in this? <laughs> <Ow! The laughs> <laughs> when Clemson went on that run where they hit like two or three threes in a row, and you're just like, oh no. And then every time it was like, response three response yeah. three yeah we got in we started playing our game and, and they, they, they were trying to play that, our game well they hit that three and it was like what 82 to 80 86 or 87 and then Estrada break broke away and got that layup at the yeah, end i loved it loved it oh loved it man i loved it and i i still can't even believe it you know and and it's such a big program builder um, oh yeah but maybe these guys go into this and they're just like, you know what? We're, we're going to play our best game that because I, I watched Illinois and Illinois didn't play their best game. You know, they're a team like us, they're, they're us and them, you know, one and two scoring, you know, best offense. And they, they'd missed layups and they didn't take advantage of opportunities. And then when they got to, uh, you know, they tied the game. They gave up 30 straight points, but yeah. they met, they kept missing shots. You know, it's not like Connecticut's defense is so much better than anybody else's. It was the pressure that they put on themselves. Um, and, and you got to play loose. You know, all the teams that win are teams that play loose. I, I don't really know why that is, but it just is. You know, when you play tight, it's hard to win games. No, oh, yeah. Well, if you are on the wrong end of a 30 to nothing run in the Elite Eight, you didn't play well. Yeah. I mean, I don't care who you're playing. I mean, <laughs> me and you could play Jordan and Bird two on two. If they score 30 points in a row, I mean, me and you aren't, we're not playing well. <laughs> do you think we could, <laughs> do you think we could score on Jordan and Bird? <laughs> <laughs> maybe in maybe in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't talk any smack. <laughs> I would just sneak attack them. <laughs> oh yeah, that, I exactly. Mean, like I can't do anything, and then just do it real quick. Because <laughs> they'd be keyed in on you. <laughs> uh, can you imagine? I mean, can you imagine how pissed off you'd be as a if your teammate, if you're playing just hypothetically Bird and and Jordan, 
and one of your teammates starts talking shit to one of them. I mean, <laughs> no, I would not like that. <laughs> I, I just pause everything and go slap him for Jordan Bird. <laughs> yeah. Anybody that says that LeBron is better than Jordan, you're just saying that. He, they, he's not. Jordan was the best basketball player that's ever put shoes on. He's Babe Ruth of basketball. And um, if he wouldn't have left for the, the Barons, he, he would have won two more championships oh, yeah. in a row. Like, come on, guys. It's it's there's just never been anything like it. And I, I guess part of it is that LeBron wanted to be Michael Jordan, wanted to Kobe Bryant wanted to be Michael Jordan, you know, or or whatever. But Michael Jordan was amazing, man. Just amazing. Well, I mean, that that game back then was so different. You know, if you got fouled, I mean, they were making every foul count. You know, yeah. I mean, you were getting just destroyed. And I just – I mean, I grew up watching basketball in the 90s, so I missed a lot of those good, you know, 80s games, obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, the NBA was fun to watch back then. Even regular yeah. season games, I mean, it was a matchup and they – you know, the – the competitive fire they all had back then, you know, it just didn't seem like it was about the money. They weren't sitting out games during the regular season. That wasn't even a thought, you know, yeah. uh, load management. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have load? You, you, you did load management on the podcast last week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Did we do two shows last week or one? We did you Monday know? and Wednesday. So it was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. What what is the you the, the the whole load management thing? Like I I came along, and I guess you did too. Like when when I was coming up, I mean, you know, you just worked. You know, you just did your thing. Like you went out and played. It's so crazy to see like you know when you see in the NBA like when the best players aren't playing you know and baseball it's too, the same thing with baseball like they they have guys that are like starting pitchers that used to be you used to try to throw a complete game now it's like if you see a guy go past the sixth inning you're like oh my god <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know like I mean let me tell you there should be if you're getting paid you know 10 20 30 million dollars a year load management should not be in your vocabulary you right, know? right right I mean, right I, I get a guy shoveling asphalt you know laying concrete <laughs> I mean, those, that guy you know in 100 degree heat i mean i i, I respect and, and feel for those guys but man you're getting paid a lot of money to play basketball uh you know your ass better be out there yeah, right. That's what it, right because see, I I I grow up thinking that like you know <laughs> you could actually do something like this and get paid, you know, like talking sports <laughs> yeah. or playing yeah. sports, you know, yeah. like it was like oh man, I mean, uh, we we had a wiffle ball league and um, I started a newsletter, uh, wiffle ball newsletter, you know, and it was <laughs> so funny. We had to change the color font on there, so it'd be like green font, purple font black font you know yellow font like on an old typewriter like, tch, 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 tch. <laughs> never kn never knowing that that's really what i would do one day <laughs> oh, oh. did you guys play wiffle ball in your neighborhood i don't you probably just played football all year round and nah, basketball we, nah, we did it all baseball football i mean depending on what season it was you know uh, yeah. I was, I, I, I never was a huge video game guy, uh, play a little bit, but I mean, I would have much rather been outside playing pickup basketball or mm -hmm. baseball. I mean, I, I used to wear my dad and my stepdad out. I mean, my dad took a beating. <laughs> he took a beating. Uh, we used to have a lot of fun. So you would be like, come home and be like, Hey, let's, let's go throw the ball or let's whatever. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And we play. I can't remember how old I was when I started beating my dad in basketball. <laughs> that I remember. <laughs> Are you talking about Bryant? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But I'll tell you this, man. When I when I got down and he was close to scoring that last basket, I got my fouls in. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I had a cousin. Yeah, I had a cousin that uh, he used to beat me in basketball all the time. 
and he was he was taller than me because he was so much older than me you know like i was in middle school and he was graduating high school i think but i'd go to their house and play and play and then you know and then something happened and I started winning and then he quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> like the only way I could score when, it, when I was like, you know, I don't know. Middle school was like the hook shot, you know, like the cream <laughs> hook. <laughs> Just get it, throw it up. Then when I was like eye to eye with them, right. Then I could take him to the rack, get oh, rebounds. Yeah. jump. But then when I started jumping over top of him and tipping the ball to myself, he don't want to play no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I was playing my dad, it was like, you know, I mean, especially back then, it was like Mark Sears trying to guide, guard Zach Eady. Yeah. <laughs> what <wasn't> happened? <laughs> yeah, I, I love those days. I don't know. I, I was just thinking because I was like, what if my son was like, hey, let's go out. You know, I get tired throwing the ball, you know? <laughs> well, well, and it's I like was, the Nerf football. It ain't even a real ball. Oh, uh, man. When I was little, I was, uh, I mean, I, I was the youngest of, uh, all in all, 16 cousins, the youngest one. And, uh, I mean, I was always the one just getting just torn apart. Football, I was getting killed. Basketball, mm-hmm. getting killed. Uh, I mean, my dad, you know, I had to – I mean, I had to fight, scratch, and claw to to just survive out there. And I, I got in a bad habit of, of biting because that was the only way I could <laughs> – <laughs> so, so that was that was the only way I could survive out there. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Let's just start biting people. So my, my dad, my dad was like, we'd be playing in the yard, and, and it was, you know, I mean, again, I was the youngest. The next, the next youngest cousin of mine was two years older than me. And at that age, two years is a lot. And so my dad got to where I mean, we'd be, you know, I'd be getting dog piled on top of just, just getting murdered out there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it got to the point where my dad, he'd hear my, my cousins screaming and yelling and he'd be like, ah, oh, shit, Jake bit one of them again. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Then look at that perfect set of teeth you have too, man. <laughs> <laughs> The problem was, it, I'd the I'd get tackled and they'd all dog pile on top of me, and I'd be freaking out at the bottom of the pile. So I'd just start biting anything I could get. <laughs> <my people. laughs> I remember doing that though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just like you know, just like if somebody got tackled, then you would just jump on them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. a lot. No referees either. You know, a lot of bad <laughs> stuff happens out there. Yeah. Especially well, when hey, you, you know, I'd be screaming, everybody get off of me. And nobody respected us, me, so you know you start biting people. Everybody starts listening. <laughs> <laughs> what was your nickname, Shark? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I would have known that. <laughs> like, so is that is that? Did you follow that up throughout your, you know, your career? Like if you were on the bottom of a pile and somebody was like not getting up. <laughs> Did you ever have to, you know, like maybe you couldn't bite them because you had a helmet on, but I mean, would you pinch somebody real hard or no, no, punch I, them? I did. I, I grew it once I st- once I got bigger than everybody else. I didn't have to worry about that as much. Really. Yeah, but I mean, at Alabama, you know, no, like no, Florida no, State. No, no was, I it, was that what happens at the bottom of those piles? Oh, uh, you know, not a whole lot happened to me. I, I you know, I, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I. I don't know if I saw a whole lot. I mean, you know, again, I I saw uh, what's his name that old that old Arkansas coach. You know, he do some questionable stuff on the sideline, but you know, <laughs> Bil- Bilama, blatant, Bilama. This, oh yeah, Bilama, yeah. <laughs> but as far as just blatant cheap shots at the bottom of the pile, I don't think I saw too much of that. I mean, the worst thing I ever saw was was. Uh, we were in the national championship game playing it uh, and obviously Clemson and uh, I handed it off to Derek and, and Derek reverse field. And I start going out there to try to lead block as he, as he reverse field. And I see Ben Bowler coming my way and, uh, and I'm looking at him. I'm like, all right, this is, you know, I'm just going to try to block him and see what happens. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, 
our Darius Stewart comes in and absolutely not. I mean, it was like watching a train hit a deer. He just disappears out of my vision and Ben Bolwares on the ground. Our Darius is standing up talking shit to him. <laughs> I mean, Ben Bolwares is laying down like he just is wounded on a battlefield. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> our Darius is just talking shit to him. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's so it was terrible oh, it was, i'll never forget it i mean I, i'm sitting here looking at a guy about to block him and all of a sudden he's just i see a blur of red and they just disappear <laughs> <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> did you run the ball or did you throw it no i was block i was trying to derrick henry reverse field oh it was derrick so okay, okay okay i was like trying to get in front and block and and uh yeah, I mean, I had my eyes locked on Ben Boyer, and he just – yeah, I mean, it was like he just got deleted from the field. <laughs> <laughs> the newest Raven, Derrick <laughs> Henry. Hey, yeah, I'll tell funny. you what, if, if you're on the field playing us in the open field, you you better be looking for number 13 because he was cleaning somebody out whenever he got an opportunity. I mean, right, right. Our Darius, well, look, our Darius is one of the most unselfish – physical wide receivers I've ever played with ever seen just uh, if you got in his way he was he was coming after you you might yeah I didn't see him lose many one-on-ones uh but he definitely wasn't worried about losing a one-on-one that just a physical altercation on the field yeah uh, yeah I mean, just a tone setter and one of my favorite teammates ever yeah uh, he yeah the, and and receivers they blocked a lot at Alabama. It's something that I hope we get back to, you know, seeing guys that will get out there and get physical. It opened up uh, all of those plays, which we really didn't see a lot of over the last few years, the receiver screens, which were always so big. You know, you get a mat- mismatch, and then when you block it right, it's hard to stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, when you got guys like that, um, you know, it only takes a few plays for DBs to get a little gun shy around them. And – uh you know, again, when they don't see it coming or they don't know it's coming, I mean, he was, he's going to block your head up, look you in the eye and do it. But Right. When, Clean. When, yeah, when you feel like you got a target, you know, between your, your numbers, <laughs> that's a scary feeling out there. Yeah, yeah. Because I'd see them – I mean, I'd see guys – when Derek would run the ball sometimes, I'd see DBs take the wrong angle on purpose just so they didn't have to tackle him. And that's I, – I know for a fact that's what they were doing. Uh, yeah, just not wanting to tackle the guy, which I mean, hell, I mean, I I can't imagine I would ever do that. But at the same time, after seeing some of those collisions that he was the giver on, I I, I can't say I'd blame him after experiencing that a few times. Yeah, yeah, I don't either. <laughs> yeah. I, I I told you I was down in Jacksonville and I'm watching the Titans and the Jaguars play. And it was like watching little leaguers. I mean, in that particular game, like he was running over Jacksonville's DBs, like no one wanted to touch him. Like it was honestly, it was, it was kind of sad to see an NFL team get beat up by a running back Just like get ragdolled. I, I know, he, yeah, because he had a, he had a really long run that was just stiff arm three people. I know exactly yeah. what game you're talking about. It was like 2017 yep. or 2018. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Uh, I watched it in a Jacksonville bar, and I was like, "Oh man!" Is there? And I noticed that there wasn't anybody. They weren't really like fan fans. I think they're getting there, but it wasn't like you know, no people were watching, but I, they weren't into it. Like yeah, you know, like 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 the Steeler fans or Cowboy fans or something, you know, <laughs> Packer fans. You're you're sitting there watching that play, wondering if you need to call call an ambulance, <laughs> <laughs> making sure they got one on the field. <laughs> I was just like yelling stuff like, oh man, you know, like <laughs> maybe they need two ambulances. <laughs> just like I don't have a dog in this fight, but I really do because I I'm pulling for uh for Derek Henry, but I'm just like just you know, being that guy, you know, just in there making jokes, but you know, just watching the game. And it, <laughs> they didn't really care at all. I was like, oh, we're just glad we got a team. <laughs> it's jacksonville oh it's jacksonville do you, you see any other pro teams around here <laughs> hey, i gotta tell you this so so we're playing savannah state at Flor- this is when i was at florida state and uh 
Kelvin Benjamin. This is it was like the largest spread. It, uh, it was one of the largest spreads in college football history, and uh, I think we beat them like fifty-five to nothing. And and we only the game rained out in the third quarter. It was like fifty-five to nothing with I don't know eight minutes left in the third quarter. Uh, and Kelvin Benjamin's in the game, and uh, I think they called a fade fade route to him and uh anyway ball goes up kelvin jumps up catches the ball for a touchdown and uh savannah state was like they were one of the worst teams and and to to walk out on a field that year in, in college football and he goes up catches this touchdown gets back up and he's talking trash to the savannah state cornerback this guy gets up and he looks at Kelvin and he goes, man, I don't give a shit. I'm a Florida state fan anyway. <laughs> That's <so> funny. <laughs> oh, that is so funny, man. And I, I am too. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit of let's talk a little bit of football before we get out of here. Uh, spring practice back in session again. The eight A game is coming up on um, on on the thirteenth, and um, this um, you know this is a, uh, a you know another opportunity for Coach DeBoer to just kind of get this this team closer and closer to uh, to this eight day game. Have you followed it at all? And you know, what are you thinking right now when you're getting in? This is scrimmage season. I'm sure you guys went through that too, right? Where you go from practice yeah. to scrimmages. Yeah, I'm a little. The biggest thing I'm concerned about is Jalen Hale and that injury. Sounds like it's worse than than just a you know sprained ankle. Or I, I I didn't think it was. I didn't know it was severe. I didn't know he went to the hospital. The hospital for as long as he did yeah uh, have you heard an update on that or do you know what it is uh i it's a i thought it was a broken leg okay well or, I, I don't know, know. It, it, they said leg injury i don't know somebody told me kneecap I, I i think it's a a broken leg and i i really hope that it's something that he recovers from fast Man, it's just that's a bad injury when you're a wide receiver yeah yeah no at this point you know you're you're still running your base offense and and hopefully they're they're getting a good grasp on everything Kalen DeBoer is bringing in you know the thing about coach Saban is when a a new coach came in he kept the lingo the same and so no matter who the new guy was you didn't have to learn a new language you know every time a, a coach came in and I guess coach Saban did it that way so that he uh I mean, as many often OCs as he was replacing, he didn't want to have to do that every time a, a new guy came in. Right. Um, but hopefully they're getting that down. I mean, uh, you know, I, I know it usually takes some time to to understand a, a new offense and, and try to get all that under your belt. Right. I mean, in 2014, I, I didn't have a spring to learn. I wish I had, but, uh, you know, I was still able to, a lot of work over the summer and and during camp, I felt pretty good about everything. Uh, but hopefully, they can put together that offense pretty quickly and get them on the same page with uh, maybe some some limited stuff to begin with. But uh, you know, it's going to be communication. I think is probably going to be something that looks a little rusty out there during the spring game, which is which makes sense. Uh, you hadn't been on the field, but what three to four weeks and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's going to take time to get all that down, get signaling in plays down, um, and, and just feeling everybody out. Um, so, really, the, the communication with the new offense to me is going to be key in, in getting this uh, this team running at a, at a smooth pace. Uh, outside of that, you know, I think it helps. You got Jalen Milrow in there who – obviously as a leader on that team and a guy that can kind of push the pace and, and get everybody uh, learning at a rate that where they feel motivated to, to do so and, and get on the same page. Uh, but, you know, again, this spring, I, I'm excited to see that the base offense and, and how we operate within it. Uh, but I, you know, again, being a new program, new offense, I, I think, 
you know, this is going to be very limited in comparison to what you see uh, week one of college football season next year. Awesome. Well, we're going to be excited. We'll get together again uh, later this week and we'll talk, uh, you know, more about the matchup with UConn and spring practice. But, um, man, I'm as excited as you about this Final Four. And, and football spring practice. I'm not trying to say that I don't love football. I'm just saying that uh, I'm in basketball mode right now. Uh, yeah, I'm the same way. I can't – again, after the week we had last week, it's hard to think about anything else, you know. Yeah. Uh, especially, I mean, you've, you've been pulling for Alabama basketball as long as I have. I, I, you just haven't seen years like this ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Do you think that um, – who, who's more upset? about the loss uh clemson or auburn fans <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you the, the one the one thing they had in all <laughs> in alabama alabama basketball or, or football as well the only argument that they could possibly make because we beat them more times in basketball made it the sweet 16 more the only thing and the last thing they had to die on the on their hill was us not making it to the final four and all that shit. They talked last year about, Oh, if they didn't make it this year, they, they'll never do it. <laughs> and, and now, now you're, you're little brother in all phases. <laughs> Every <laughs> single phase of athletics. Yeah. Let's win. T- let's just shock the world. Win two more games. Oh my gosh. Tuscaloosa will come apart. Yeah. I mean, I, I I saw some videos of uh, Tuscaloosa on Saturday night, and man, that looked like a place they they were having a lot of fun in T Town. Uh, yeah, I watched the um, twenty twenty championship in Tuscaloosa, and then I told you I think I made a video of the the block party that broke out after we won. That went that I sold to a guy went viral and then some just I got a random message like hey can I buy this from you and I ended up getting a check you know like a like a six hundred bucks you know for a twelve <laughs> second video but what it was was that they they it was the whole streets everybody's in the streets and I'm panning around and then this guy had climbed up in a tree <laughs> like out in front of rounders I may have then, seen that video yeah and then another guy I probably did yeah and another another guy got on the roof of the cvs <laughs> and next thing i know man like i had like it, it i had it's probably the only time that a video of mine went viral well maybe not the only time but it went viral and then uh because i can remember some other ones but um and, and then at the next morning, like it was everywhere, man. Like news, I mean, just everywhere oh, yeah. I turned. You know, yeah, it was, was like no, the, the, there was no COVID protocol that night in Tuscaloosa. Uh-uh. That's, that's sure. why they like. That's why the video went. It wasn't that they were happy that we won. It was that, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, where's your masks? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're not six feet apart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you better have your shots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, you got anything going on uh, that you want to talk about? Man, no, I'm uh, I'm just excited for Saturday. Can't wait. That's going to be uh, I'm going to be glued to the TV. It's uh, and I won't be fasting. So I'm fasting right good now. Good luck with that. I know. This is. Uh, I was just thinking, uh, to be honest with you, that I was hungry. <laughs> and I was going to ask you, with this fast, how much bone broth do you get? <laughs> per day i mean i didn't follow the protocol too well <laughs> Did you, were you drinking like you were just drinking on bone broth all the oh, time yeah. oh yeah just oh, to yeah. fill your tump your, your stomach yeah i started on that thing i did the bone broth for one lunch and then i was like you know what i'm just gonna eat one meal a day uh and that fast lasted about two days <laughs> okay well i'm going until friday yeah i was about to say i got bad news for you those hunger pains are going to get a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that, man. I, I'm, I'm doing it uh, for a good cause. So, you know, we'll see if I can pull it off. But, um, you know, making up for all the uh, Fridays I during Lent that I didn't follow Lent. I'm just going to do them all in one week in a row. Well, hey, I'm pulling for you. I'll be pulling you. for you from the sidelines. <laughs> 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 hey, guys. <laughs> Make sure that you guys uh, like and subscribe and uh, get in the comment section. We really appreciate it here on Elephant in the Room. And uh, we're brought to you by 
uh, my bookie, mybookie.ag. The uh, time is now. Final Four NBA Major League Baseball. Go Cubs! Cubs won on opening day at Wrigley. Uh, but check it all out, guys and uh, and gals. All you that are hanging out with us right now, mybookie.ag. Use the promo code next round, and you get up to uh, a, a half of a thousand dollar price match. So what's half of that? Five hundred bucks. So it would be like you put down a thousand, they'll pr- price match five hundred. So there you go. Uh, and, and then you can bet on all this stuff legally and, and see what you can do. I mean, do, do parlays, uh, you know, pick, pick the winners. And if you need help doing that, Lance's lock, our, our buddy, uh, Lance Taylor, Lance's lock.com get you set up with, uh, NBA college basketball, baseball, all that stuff at Lance's lock. All right. That's Jake Coker. I'm Mick Gillespie. Great to talk to you guys. Elephant in the room. And we will do it again really soon in a roll tide.